I'm told here in Uganda, over 80% of your budget is covered by donors. And other African countries not shy of the 80%. And I can tell you that if it is supported in that manner, it cannot be sustained. There is no free lunch. Even when we are supported in those areas, there are always strings attached. The strings may be invisible, but they are there. And the time is now for us to smell the coffee as the cliche goes but sometimes i suspect in africa that even our sense of smell is dead so that we are incapable of smelling that proverbial coffee and the time is now for us to ask ourselves how can we liberate ourselves from this dependence i know you are worried about uganda but Uganda cannot exist in spite of the region because HIV AIDS is not constrained to the borders. What happens in the Democratic Republic of Congo and the movement of peoples will affect what you are doing here in Uganda. You cannot ignore what is happening in South Sudan. You cannot ignore what is happening in the region as long as we are mobile. And if we thought that you could control it within Uganda, I see the Ugandans are making promises to themselves and I do not begrudge them that by the year 2030, uh, HIV will have been eliminated. Have you talked to the Kenyans? Have you talked to the South Sudanese and the Burundians and the Rwandans that they are doing the same? If you have not had that conversation, that is a hollow promise. We'll sit here in 2030 and you'll once again promise to eliminate it in 2060. And I'm therefore suggesting to us that in as much as we are looking at the Ugandan situation, it is important to ask ourselves and what are we doing in the East African environment? What about in the African arena? Many of us are familiar with the African health strategy. Those of you who are doctors will know that we now have centers for disease control with the mother center based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The rest are distributed. I think one is in Nigeria, the other one in Kenya, the other one is in Gabon, and the other one in Egypt, five in total. But who is funding all these things? If you look at African institutions and African initiatives, they are all externally funded up to the extent of 80%. So they are African only in name, but the funding is from outside. And that is why this morning we are wrapping our minds around how we can tackle the question of funding. Those of you who are mothers will agree with me. If you have a child, who upon being born suckles as he or she should, but at age 40, they are still suckling. You must be very worried about that child because that is a sustained state of childhood, which must not be allowed. Africa is such a child. At 40, we are still suckling. We must now be weaned off the breasts of our donors. And we are asking ourselves, how are we going to do it? What are the different methods? I am informed that in Uganda, your parliament in its wisdom made a decision to create a HIV AIDS trust fund. That was several years ago. Africa is never short of good intentions. Africa is never short of good laws. In fact, in Africa, there is a forest of good laws which are honored in breach. The problem is that if whenever we have senior politicians in the room, the professionals just coil their tail between their legs and what they engage in is praising those individuals, not saying the right thing. And I, I hope that when, when, when uh, the prime minister was here, I hope you spoke boldly to the prime minister. 
you've got to learn we've got to learn to speak boldly these are human beings they're just occupying offices which you too can occupy and and if you speak boldly and firmly and respectfully they are running countries they want to succeed and they want to succeed by doing positive things and i want to imagine that the proceedings of this conference will find its way on the desk of the president not the executive summary because the executive summary sanitizes things. Let the president read the full-blooded deliberations of this particular engagement so that he is capable of appreciating that these are the areas. Because how can it be that the program on HIV AIDS is run from the office of the president and yet the HIV trust fund is not established. When you are talking about the annual milestones, what do you tell the president? That for the last five years, we have had an inactive fund? And how does he think about it? If the president is talking about the parish model, is the parish model not impacted on negatively by HIV AIDS? so that money that ought to go into actual development is then not taken into that arena. I believe that this can be done. The other area where I think is important is that even uh, the, the research institutes in this country, because research is at the very heart of it. You know, I do not know whether sometimes you feel the pain I do when I think about our countries and about our continent. There was COVID here, and we were all wearing masks. Those masks, 90% of them are from China. You are going through tests. The test kits are all from China. And we did not stop there. When the vaccines came, all of us who are lining to be vaccinated, we do not know what we are being injected with. By faith, we just believed that it is good. And then we started complaining that we are not being given vaccines. Who should give us? Who owes us a duty? Why can't we produce our own? And I'm saying this because we must also fund research. Many institutions now in East Africa and in Africa, we have research departments. But if you ask many of those individuals who had those institutions, apart from the money that they are given to pay themselves salaries, there is very little money that is available for research. So our researchers have become proposal writing machines. They are either writing a proposal to USID, CEDA Sweden, CEDA Canada, that is all we do. And if you write proposals for too long, you forget every other thing. You become a, an expert in writing proposals and delivering reports to Copenhagen or Oslo or Washington or, or London or Ottawa. Africa must stop that. Africa must stop that. Those who are in the business of uh, innovating and creating the vaccine, they are laughing all the way to the bank. They have made money in the billions. Therefore, they can fund research. Vaccines, HIV AIDS vaccine. We are waiting for Europe and America to, to discover. And meanwhile, we are conferring professorial titles on our research for what? Professors of what? We must be bold and bland because it is through innovation and invention that we can also generate funds. The problem we have in Africa is theft. We have perfected the art of theft. We call it by its Christian name, which is corruption. It is theft on an industrial scale. The Christian name sometimes gives it a veneer of, 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 of wit. But we are, we are thieves. I do not know why. 
and 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 we must stop being thieves if if we are going to fund these initiatives and and this is very critical because a lot of money is also lost through the thing that we call corruption and you now see donors for example saying we are not going to fund government we are going to fund projects directly and why do they say that because you give ten thousand dollars to a governmental institution eight percent eighty percent of it will be building a villa somewhere in uganda or building something somewhere in nairobi so they go directly so we must also ensure that we improve efficient utilization of funds but i was talking about national health institution in kenya national health hospital insurance fund how are we funding this in the scandinavian countries you find that taxes reach up to 52 percent of the income why because they know that the money is going to the right place at the right moment if we were to create to establish national health insurance funds and we were to strengthen them and to make contribution and to make the case for HIV AIDS, which we desire to eliminate, then we could also create a funding uh, avenue which would liberate us from donor funding. And Europe and America owes us, actually, they must be told. Sometimes we don't tell them they owe us but they must do so in dignity and in a sustainable manner we must make support to us dignified i'm a king yes i'm a king i think i'm a king